Amazing. Thank you very much for having us. And thank you very much for having us here with Spotlight TV. We are excited to chat with you about your journey and your career, how it evolved. Talk to me a little bit about how you realize, okay, this is it. Uh huh. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, I would have to say, when I was a little kid, I had a dream mm -hmm. one day in Montreal. And I got up in the morning and I told my family that I dreamed that I was on stage and I was wearing this beautiful long dress and all these people in this auditorium, they were all standing up and applauding and yelling, bravo, bravo. And that became a joke in our family because they thought I was so, whatever, la di da and so dramatic thinking. And then all these years later, when I finally did my first show in fourth year university, I realized this is really what I wanted to do. And I'd forgotten about that little dream. And I moved to Toronto and I very slowly got going and I did a show at Leah Poslin's theater. I got the lead in applause and I took my bow. The whole set would lift and I would come out in this new gown, this beautiful long dress. And the night my mother came to see me, she, she came to my dressing room right after. I opened the door and she said, Mon Dieu, Louise. Bravo, mon. Bravo. Oh, and I knew what she meant. You've achieved your dream, you know? So I think I didn't know what musical theater was when I was a kid. I had no idea what that was. And I didn't know what that was till I was in high school. Mm -hmm. But somehow I pictured myself, I guess, on stage uh, being applauded. <laughs> What's the best advice someone gave to us, you know, as a young one? Now, you know, you've evolved. You're, you're an actor. You do the thing. You're a triple threat. You really, you really have to own your craft. Who really gave you that best advice looking back on your journey? Oh my God. You know what? I'd have to say my mother, even though she doesn't know a thing about musical theater and that is not what she was hoping I would do. She would have been happier if I taught music in high school mm -hmm. because you get benefits and insurance and a, and a pension but she always encouraged us to go out and see other things and travel and mm -hmm. go to where things are different and study 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 education was the thing because she didn't have it she didn't get to have it so i have to say that from the beginning yeah she instilled that in me you you have to go out of your comfort zone and find out what's happening in the world. And, and she would say to me, you're smart, you can do anything you want. You could be good at so many things. She always said that to me. And I believed her. There you go. And there you have it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful news. You know, speaking of wonderful, being here at the Wonderful Women event here at Casa Loma, what does this mean to you? Because this event is the fourth annual and it's a very big deal. Tell me how you feel about being here. Well, I was honored to be asked, to be honest with you. I think all we need in the world is for people to support each other, for mm -hmm. people to help each other, for people to give a lending hand to one another. And that's what this is all about. And it's especially wonderful because it's for women, young women who are on the brink of changing the world. My God, in the science world and getting to that high level. I think it's a wonderful thing to just say, hey, we are just gonna help you because you are smart and you have something to give to the world and you need help. So here, here you go, go. Conquer. That's it, and you run with it. That's it. Tell me a little more about your career. What's next for you? Oh, I've got a. Oh, I hope this thing works out. I can't even tell you what it is, but if it does, it'll be next year and it'll be here. And uh, it's kind of an exciting project, but you know what? I've learned over the years mm -hmm. never get excited about something, never assume it's going to happen mm -hmm. until you have signed that contract and you know for sure it's happening. But I am excited. <laughs> about this thing <laughs> if and when it happens of next year <laughs> that's wonderful because that's wonderful news you got to look forward to something you know they say the gig is very important the next gig right so it's always about the next gig in this business yeah um so it's a humbling business that way you finish one gig and then sometimes you've got three things lined up and sometimes there's nothing all of a sudden and you go what the hell so then you're working 
on maybe creating a new concert so your concert agent can maybe book you doing something else so you're always trying to keep busy keep working keep learning but yeah sometimes it's like oh my god I hope this works out because I'm not working for some time but to be honest with you I'm getting old <laughs> and I'm getting to the point where I go it's okay I don't want to be working all the time anymore but you look fantastic you look fabulous doesn't she look fabulous on my TV I I'm work out a lot well thank you very much my name is Louis Pitre, je m'appelle Louis Pitre, Mickey Louis Pitre, et vous regardez, you are watching Spotlight TV.